the Foghorn. It was a quarter past seven on a cold November evening. The heating was on. The light at the top of the lighthouse was switching its tail in 200 directions. The foghorn bumbled in the throat of the tower. There wasn't a town for a hundred miles down the coast, just a road which came lonely through dead country to the sea with a few cars on it. And then a stretch of two miles of cold water out to our rock and rare few ships. Out there, in the cold water, far from land, McDonn and I waited every night for the coming of the fog. And if the ships didn't see our light, there was always our voice. Well, it's a lonely life, but you're used to it now, aren't you? Yeah, you're a good talker, thank the Lord. <laughs> Well, it's your turn on land tomorrow, Johnny. To dance the ladies and drink the gin. Look, Don, what do you think about when I leave you out here alone? Well, I think about the mysteries of the sea. Yes. You know, one night years ago, I was here alone when all the fish of the sea surfaced out there. Something made them swim in and lie in the bay, staring up at this lighthouse with their funny eyes. Turned me cold. Then about midnight, they slipped away. A million of them gone, just like that. I think maybe in some strange sort of way they came to worship. Yes, uh, why not? Uh, this tower... Seventy feet above the water with a godlike light in its head and a monster voice. Why not? Yes, for all our submarines and sonic devices, it'll be ten thousand years before we set foot on the real bottom of the ocean and know the real terror. Come on, I've got something to show you. Let's go up top. We climbed up the 80 steps to the top of the lighthouse. In the room housing the great, slowly turning beacon, McDonne switched off the room lights so there'd be no reflection on the plate glass all around us. Sounds like an animal, don't it? A big, lonely animal crying in the night, calling out into the deeps. I'm here, I'm here. And the deeps do answer. Oh, yes, they do. Johnny, uh, you've been here uh, three months, so uh, I'd better prepare you. Prepare me? For what? Uh, about this time of year, November, something comes to visit the lighthouse. The shoals of fish, like you said? No, something else. If my calendar's right, and it's been happening three years running now... This'll be the first time anybody's been with me here to verify it. Tonight. You see, the foghorn calls it, and it comes. But what is it? Shh. There. Something was swimming towards the lighthouse tower. You couldn't see far through the murk. But at first, there was a ripple, followed by a wave, a rising, a bubble, a bit of froth, and then, from the surface of the cold sea, came a head, a large head, dark colored, with immense eyes, and then a neck, and then, not a body, but more neck, and more. 
The head rose a full 40 feet above the water on a slender and beautiful dark neck. There was the flicker of a tail. In all, I estimated the monster at 90 or 100 feet. And there were just the two of us, alone in the high tower. Steady, boy. Steady. It's impossible. No, Johnny. We're impossible. It's like it always was ten million years ago. It hasn't changed. It's us and the land that have changed and become impossible. Us. It's a dinosaur of some sort. One of the tribe. A plesiosaur, maybe. But they all died out. No. Only hid away in the deeps. What do we do? Do? We got our jobs. We can't leave. We're safe here. But why does it come here? Now, do you see why it comes here? Yes. All year long, Johnny. That poor monster there, lying far out, a thousand miles at sea, and twenty miles deep, maybe, biding its time. Maybe it's a million years old, this one creature. Think of it. Waiting a million years. Maybe it's the last of its kind. I sort of think that's true. Five years ago, men came and built this lighthouse and set up their foghorn. And every year, around this time when the fogs gather, the horn sounds out toward the place where you bury yourself in sleep and in sea memories of a world where once there were thousands like yourself, but now you're alone in a world not made for you. A world where you have to hide. Yes, that horn comes through a thousand miles of water, faint and familiar. And the furnace in your belly stokes up, and you begin to rise slow, slow. You got to be slow. If you surfaced all at once, you'd explode. You rise slow through the autumn months, through September when the fog started, through October with more fog and the horns still calling you on. And then, in November, after pressurizing yourself day by day, a few feet higher every hour, you're near the surface. And then swimming through the cold waters to the lighthouse. And here's the lighthouse calling you with a long neck like your neck sticking way up out of the water and a body like your body. And most important of all, a voice like your voice. Last year, that creature swam round and round, round and round all night, not coming too near. Puzzled, I'd say, afraid, maybe, and a bit angry after coming all this way. But next day, the fog lifted unexpectedly, and the sun came out. And the monster swam off away from the heat and the silence and didn't come back. I suppose it's been brooding on it for a year now. That's life for you. Someone always waiting for someone who never comes home. Always someone loving something more than that thing loves them. And after a while, you, you want to destroy whatever that thing is so it can't hurt you no more. It's coming nearer. Look at its eyes, reflecting the light. Let's see what happens when I turn the foghorn off. There. The monster stopped and froze. Its great lantern eyes blinked. Its mouth gaped. It twitched its head this way and that, as if to seek the sounds now dwindled off into the fog. It peered at the lighthouse. Then its eyes caught fire. It reared up, thrashed the water, and pushed at the tower, its eyes filled with angry torment. We're done. Switch on the horn. Gigantic paws, fish skin glittering in webs between the finger-like projections, clawing at the tower, 
a huge eye on the right side of its anguished head glittered before me through the window. Downstairs, quick! We stumbled and half fell down the stairs. We ducked under the stairs into the small stone cellar and held tight. Then it was over. There was nothing but darkness and the wash of the sea on the raw stones. Listen. It was the sound of lament, of bewilderment, of the loneliness of the great monster folded over and upon us, above us, so that the sickening reek of its body filled the air of our cellar, ourselves a stone's thickness away from it. The tower was gone. The light was gone. The thing that had called to it across a million years was gone. And the monster was opening its mouth and sending out great sounds. The sounds of a foghorn again and again. And ships far at sea, not finding the light, not seeing anything, but passing and hearing the call, must have thought, there it is, the lonely sound, the lonesome bay horn. All's well, we've rounded the cape. And so it went on for the rest of that night. The sun was hot and yellow the next afternoon when the rescuers came to dig us out of our cellar. It fell apart is all, boys. Structural fault in the building, I guess. We uh, had a few bad knocks from the waves and it just crumbled the whole damn thing. Uh, didn't it, Johnny boy? There was nothing to see. The ocean was calm, the sky blue. The only thing was a great algaic stink from the green water that covered the fallen tower stones. Flies buzzed about everywhere. The next year, they built a new lighthouse. But by that time, I had a job in the little town and a wife and a good, small, warm house. As for McDunn, he was master of the new lighthouse, built to his own specifications out of steel reinforced concrete. Just in case, he said. The new lighthouse was ready in November. I drove down alone one evening and parked my car and looked out at the fog rolling in from the sea. McDonne came from his new lighthouse and joined me. Together, we listened. And the monster? No, it's not come back. It's gone away. It's gone back to the deeps. It's learned you can't love anything too much in this world. It's gone into the deepest deeps to wait another million years. Ah, the poor thing, waiting out there and waiting out there while man comes and goes on this pitiful little planet he's remade. Waiting and waiting. I couldn't see the lighthouse, or even the light. I could only hear the horn. The horn. The horn. It sounded like a monster calling. I sat there, wishing there was something I could say. In those two stories by Ray Bradbury, you heard Fern Arfin, Ed Bishop, Lindsay Coulson, Paul Maxwell and Simon Treves. The stories were dramatised by Lawrence Gilbert and directed by Peter Hutchings. Mm -hmm.